Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Evil Zombie here. So today I'm going to be talking to you about Call of Cthulhu, the starter set. I'm excited to go over this one with you because this actually has adventures. It's got rule book. It's got just cool things. It's got dice. Um, yeah, I just want to go over this with you and tell you what's in the starter set, what fun you can have with it, and what I'm looking forward to because I've been glancing through it and having fun. It does give you a listing of all the things that are inside it, of course. It does have the handouts and all that stuff. Uh, it has four different adventures in it. And the box itself is actually pretty thin. Like, I was surprised how thin it was. It's about as thin as... No, it's even thinner than the Destroyer of Worlds box from Alien RPG. Um, it's, like, about as thick as the book, I think. So I'm going to put the box over there. So let's go over what comes in the box. First off, you of course get some dice. And you'll notice that there is no D12 because Call of Cthulhu does not use a D12 <laughs> at all. But you have uh, your percentile dice, uh, these ones, and then you have one for doing um, was it like a bonus dice or a penalty dice as well. Did I say dice? That's not a word. So that's nice to give you a set of dice so you can kind of get off the ground running. You can kind of just keep going right from the start. So that's that's cool. I mean, they're not the best kind of dice, but it's nice that they have one of different colors so you can tell which one apart, you know? Um, you have the different, the several different books, of course. Oh, wait, no. This is the first thing that comes in the box. Uh, just a list that kind of tells you what is in here and what the purpose of the books are, what order you should read them. And on the back, it talks about the company and their basic purpose and their website. Chaosium because they are cool and I do like their stuff. Um, actually, I'm gonna set that over here so I don't lose that. Okay, so book one is interesting. Remember how I was playing Alone Against Fear on my channel? That was a single-player tabletop RPG. The first book is basically that. Um, it's a, it's a choose your adventure kind of thing, and it says like in this part it says go to page whatever for each part, you know. Let me see if I can adjust. There you go. I had to adjust my lens a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, it, like, you read the description. It tells you what's happening. And then it tells you what page to go or what number to go to. So, for that one, we go 25. And that's where we are. And then, depending on what happens, you go to these different page numbers. And that's kind of how you go through it. They expect you to play this first to understand how a role-playing game goes and how the story would flow and what kind of atmosphere you would expect for it. And it's a decent adventure, and it does a good job of that. And then now that you've played that and you've gone through it, what they want you to do is go through the rule book. And it's a very simplified rule book. It's very short. Uh, oh, yeah, it's 22 pages. Okay. Because remember, like, in uh, Dungeons & Dragons starter set, that was like a 64-page rule book or something, the magazine-sized one? 22 pages. You have no excuse. And I love the quick reference chart. This makes it so easy to do character build and understand um, the half value and fifth value based on any of your dice rolls for, or based on any of your character stats. It makes it so much easier. I love having a chart in the back. Um, it goes over basically what the game is and the concepts, all that stuff. It does have beautiful artwork. Every All the artwork in the Call of Cthulhu set series is wonderful. Look at that. That just looks amazing. I'm a sucker for good artwork. Um, it talks about how you really don't need minis. You don't need maps and all that stuff. Really, you can use them if you prefer, but it doesn't require them. Um, it tells you about a few different occupations so that you have something to kind of start with. Um, let's see, a couple skills so you understand what they are. It just kind of, and then I do like the way that character building is done in Call of Cthulhu a lot. I love the way it's done in the main rule book, but this is okay. It kind of gets this, the point across. This really kind of just rushes you through it and then just pushes you out the door saying, okay, you got the gist of it. It tells you a bit about madness and things like that. So you can kind of actually play it based on just this. Sorry, I feel like I have to yawn. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> then book three is, uh, there are three adventures in book three. Paper Chase is one I've seen online or people have played it. That one I've been reading through on my own as well. You can actually go all the way through that one without combat. Um, there is combat in Call of Cthulhu, but it's not the main focus. Because you might die if you do combat. <laughs> like, you, you probably will die. But the artwork is, of course, very well done. This is in Paper Chase. I remember that. Um, the ghouls are cool. That's basically how they're described in the books. It, I love the artwork in this. 
Edge of Darkness, one of the scenarios. It has the different uh, handouts that you would see in each one of them in the book, as well as a physical one. Here's some of the handouts. Um, the adventures are pretty good. They're okay, both. They're okay adventures. I would suggest getting the main book, Door to Darkness, if you want like a more... Uh, well, I guess another beginner-friendly um, dungeon, or not dungeon, uh, adventure set. And several adventures, and I think it's like six. That's good for like a $25 book. But this is great for starting out as well. It's fantastic. Um, there's character sheets, so it goes over each of them and what it includes. And they're actually pretty nice paper. It's like parchment, which is kind of cool. It doesn't feel like a glossy paper, because I hate that when we're trying to read your your stuff, you know? Goes over the back the backstory of them on there and their details, but talks about all their stats up here. I like that. It has a nice little full color picture. I don't like I yawn so much. I'm just tired. I say a one, two, three, four. Hey, Indian Jones. Oh, it's even called Nevada Jones. <laughs> five. I think it's a six. No, it's five. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a good amount of characters. And then they have this one included, or these ones included, so you can photocopy these if you want and then make more character sheets so that you can make your own characters based on what you read inside that rule book. And there's actually a, several of them, which I think is a nice touch, personally. Um, of course, here's a bunch of handouts for all the different adventures that you can hand out to your players. That's why they're called handouts. Um... If you want to, you can hand those over to them, and then they can have that when they get to certain areas or they unlock certain things. Uh, there are some maps, much like that. I like maps. That's something you can hand them and be like, okay, this is the area. This is where you are. Check it out. It has them all numbered and everything. I like it. I like maps. Maps are something I do enjoy looking through in books like this. I'm going to skip through a little bit so I don't spoil anything. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. Is this one part of it? I think this is actually... Oh, nope, it's not. Okay, cool. Like the, It looks like train tracks at first glance, but this is the Central Park, and this is kind of like all the buildings in the cities. It's nice. Uh, the maps don't have anything on the back side of them. I've noticed that, but it's fine. You don't need to have those double-sided. You don't want to have extra handouts handed to them that they shouldn't see yet. But I do like this. It's well done. And it does have everything you would need nicely laid out to do this. And it teaches you, it trains you how to play. Thanks to book one being how you would go through an adventure, um, just like so you understand what you're trying to aim for. And then the um, book two having all the introductory rules just to get you up and going for the basics, the core basics. It's not all the rules, but it's, it, the, it's the very bare minimum to actually go. So I'm happy they did that. I, I like the box set. It's good. And I don't know. I think it's well worth it. It's nice. Little, I think this was like 20 bucks. Um, I think this was like 20 bucks, 20, 25, something like that. So I'd say it's definitely a good, a good deal. Chaos theme is nice. And I would suggest this because if you, well, if you like Call of Cthulhu, if you're a fan of Call of Cthulhu, then this is something big for you. It's good because this is a cool game and this is a good way to dip your toes into the water and see if you want to uh, get the core rule book, which is like 400 pages and has a lot more stuff. <laughs> this is a good way to have a basic starting adventure. You know, actually, this is very popular in Japan, this game. Call of Cthulhu is wildly popular over there, more than D&D. Um, but it's a really good game. I enjoy it and I've been having fun blasting through the books for it and just having a good time. So I'll see you guys later. Um, links in the description below, of course, and go check it out. Affiliate links help me out, but they don't cost you any extra. That's just there. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.